Welcome to High School Football Game Night. Presented by Scenic Cable Network and Production. Now, here's tonight's game. Hello and welcome to the new stadium at Rehoboth High School. Hi, I'm Mick Kirkland with Coach Harry Wayne Parrish, bringing you the first game of the year. Good to have you back again, Coach. Mick, glad to be here, man. It's really good. Beautiful setting, beautiful stadium. I've never, I haven't seen a, a row of cars coming in, waiting to get in a stadium in a while in high school football around here. That's exciting to see. I tell you what, probably by the time some of them get in here, it'll probably be the end of the first quarter. Oh, yeah. I had, to, I had to park about a block away to get here because I was afraid you'd be mad at me if I came in after the first quarter. <laughs> uh, I think Jimbo was stuck somewhere out in traffic. He needs uh, to be walking more than I do, too, probably. <laughs> okay, we're getting ready for the kickoff. And these two teams played last year. And uh, the Rehoboth uh, was the only team that Northview beat last year. But it was a very competitive game. Oh, yeah. Both of them, both of them are very competitive. Kennemore starts off number 18. A junior kicker will be kicking off for Northview, and it should be a really good ball game. Okay. We're getting set for the kickoff. A good crowd on hand, and I expect uh, these stands will probably be full by the end of the night. And Rehoboth receives the ball, and uh, number 21 takes it out to about the 22-yard line. That's Corey Perkins. Uh, I'm not too familiar with him on the football field, but very familiar with him on the basketball court. He's yeah, an outstanding good, athlete. Kahili uh, uh, Blocker made the tackle, number 28, a running back for Northview, covering the kick real well. So uh, Keeley Blocker, I believe is how you pronounce it, K-H-A-L-I. Okay, Rehoboth starts with the ball on their own 22-yard line. Then the wing tee mitt came out with a double-double wing, the wing tee, the uh, – Kind of offense Providence used to, you know, run. So, uh, wing T offense. Emory Ladder's offense. And the handoff is to Perkins, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. And making, the tackle for, making the tackle for Northview is number 44. Marvin Bush did a really good job. They just ran a lead. A lead inside, pulling both guard and tight backside tackle, and it's a it's a mesh type power type offense. This uh, this this wing T is, and it's a double wing T offense, and uh, it's just tough to stop. They'll wear you down over a period of time, especially in this heat. So it brings up second and about 14 for Rehoboth, and they get it back to about the 20 yard line, the gain of about two yards. On the play, they shifted out then to a to a split end formation and ran the counter option. Quarterback reversed out and came down the lane. Counter lead option came down the line and pitched it to the running back. And but he didn't have to pitch it. He kept it and uh, and uh, gained what a half a yard. But uh, third down and long. Now they're still in the wing tee. They broke it a little bit then, but it's, it's a wing tee play. Back to the double tight wing tee. Hunter Karen is the quarterback for the Rehoboth Rebels. Unbalanced line. And they give it to Perkins, and he's going to be hit just uh, beyond the line of scrimmage. Uh, no gain on the play, so it's going to bring up four da fourth down. Uh, like Jalen Thomas made that play. They ran a, a, a sweep that time to the right side, got an unbalanced line, and ran a sweep to the right. And uh, Norfie did a good job of turning the play back in, and the inside pursuit did a great job of pursuing. And So that's the first time Norfie's played defense all year and stopped them on the first drive. And looks a lot better than last year already. Uh, see what happens here on fourth down with them kicking the ball. Then a spread punt formation. It's a high punt, and it's going to go out of bounds at about the – they'll mark it out at the 41 the the yard, yard line. line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought the, ref, um, the referee's – Think he's well, let's see. Up. He's going to come up to around the 49 and a half. Yeah. So it'll be Northview's ball first down and first down on the on the 49-yard line, right at the 50-yard line, close to it. See what Northview comes out in. Uh, that was a pretty good, pretty good defensive series for Northview. Then uh, uh, Rehoboth's offense was just getting started, but they run in the double wing tight offense. Really a tough de offense to defend over a period of time. A lot of leads, power things, sweeps. Uh, so let's see what Northview comes out in. Okay, starting quarterback for tonight is number 10 for Northview, Gunnar Peters. In the backfield is number, well, we have a number nine. I don't know if we have him on our roster. So that was a penalty on the 
kickoff, and they declined the penalty, so they will be taking over just shy of the 50-yard line. Is that, eight? Is that Jalen Harris or number eight or nine? I don't know. Uh, They're in a spread offense, though, in, in, in the three wide to the right and one to the left. And the ball is handed off and uh, gain of a couple of yards that time. Blocker on the carry. Thompson on the tackle Joshua for Tom Rehoboth. Yeah. Joshua Thompson. That was just a dive option. Quarterback read it and keep it, kept it. And uh, from the spread, now they're back in the trip, set it to the right again with a wing. With a, uh, no back, no backs in the backfield. A complete different set, man in motion. And they hand it off to number nine, who goes to the outside, but he's met by a couple of Rehoboth defenders after a gain of about a yard. So it brings up third and about uh, six for Rehoboth. That was just a speed sweep there. Just a guy goes in motion, and, and uh, they hand it to him quick and trying to get on the corner. Just a speed sweep. But Rehoboth did a good job of coming up containing the play. And Now back to the no. Uh, well, they got one man in the backfield, double twins to each side. Running the lead option this way. And uh, Ghana pitches the ball out to number 20, who takes it down to the 25-yard line. That was uh, Caleb Easley on the carry, but we have a flag on the play. It was just a lead option that way. Just a lead option means there's not any back to, uh, not a dive option, not a dive back in there. And the quarterback comes down the line and reads the outside in, pitches the ball, and that's what he did. Flipped it to, to Easley and did a good job. It looked like somebody might have clipped. I saw something on the wide receiver out there, but I wasn't sure if he did it or not, so it could bring it all back. It's uh, against the Cougars. Okay, we we just got an update on one of the players. Number nine is Adrian Brooks. Okay. So, so the Cougars call for a block in the back, so it brings up you, third and 14 for the Cougars. The ball back near the 46-yard line. Got a spread offense, no back. Trips on one side, twin to the left. Man in motion. And it's thrown to number 20, and it's going to be enough for a first down. That was completed to Caleb Easley. Well, they did. They faked, they faked the lead sweep then to the right and sent the inside, the, the middle receiver up in the seam. Quarterback did a, uh, did a great job of reading it and put it right in there. It was a really good job. That was Gunnar Peters threw the ball and easily caught it. A really good play call there on third and long. So it brings up a uh, first and ten for the Cougars. The ball inside the 35 at about the 33-yard line of Rehoboth. Peters pitches the ball over to Adrian uh, Brooks, and it's complete. How about Short gain on the play of about a yard. A swing pass this that time, just a swing pass out to the right and a back back swinging around. What I mean and kind of and hit him out of the backfield and uh, picked up about a yard or so with that. So it's now second long and they're back. They're now then the first time they've been in a set with uh, with double backs back there. Two backs in the backfield with twins to one side and single to the left. So it brings up second and ten for the Cougars. The pitch back to uh, Easley and nothing there. Good uh, defense by the Rebels of Rehoboth. Good pursuit. Option to the left that time. They got in the formation to come back to option to the left and Rehoboth didn't adjust and just, adjust and just stayed where they were and they had too many men on that side. But anyway, lead option to the left and uh, didn't pick up a lot. So now it's third and long. So the Cougars in another third and long situation. They were able to get the first down the last time on a pass from um, from the quarterback rolls out. He finds a receiver open and he couldn't hold on to it. Peters uh, threw it to, it was intended for number 23, Kennington Easley, and it's incomplete, so it brings up fourth down for the Cougars. That was a beautiful pass and throw then. We just, uh, Easley just couldn't hang on to it, but it was an excellent organized play, and he was open, did, a, did about a 15-yard out pass. 
in a good timing. Quarterback did a great job of putting it in there just easily. Couldn't hang on to it a little bit, a little bit long, but a good job. Now we're going to try a field goal, I believe, Mitt. This one will be a 49-yarder, I believe. I don't think I know a 40, well, almost a 49-yarder, 48 and a half. And uh, Andrew Kennemore. He puts it up. It's short. And uh, so the Cougars will. Uh, and there's a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is. I tell you, Kennemore, I remember when he first started kicking for Northview you know, a couple of years ago. He's came a long way. He really has improved his leg strength. And uh, you can tell he's a lot better. Got a hold in uh, no, a rough in the kicker. So that's an automatic first down. Yeah, looks like. Not a passer, he's a kicker. Kicker, roughing the kicker. Okay, so that will give Northview. Okay, roughing the kicker. Yeah, it has to be kicker, kicker no yeah. passer. And uh, huh. so they gave the wrong signal. They gave the passing signal, but there was a. It's a so it's a. It'll be a first down for the Cougars, and it will be inside the 20-yard line, spotted at about the 16. Right. So a big mistake that time uh, by Rehoboth is uh, turned into a big first down for the Cougars. Double twin to each side, one back in the backfield. And the handoff to number 20. Number 20. That's uh, easily. Yards. Caleb Easley. That's the option, the dive option, and uh, and he cut back. If he could have seen the hole, if he'd have cut to the right, he'd have picked up big yardage. But he picked up about three. Just a dive option is all that is, and it's uh, with double twin set. So it's second down and eight, seven. And there's a flag. I'm not sure what it is. It may be. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. There is a flag on the play. Okay, it's a warning, sideline warning. So it will be second and seven for the Cougars. The ball just inside the uh, 15. Trip to the left and single to the right. Running the lead option. Peters keeps it on the option, and the ball pops a loose right into the hand of a Rehoboth player. So that great field position, and they turn it over to the Rebels of Rehoboth, Rehoboth uh, on a fumble by uh, Peters. He just turned the corner. And there's a flag, and, a flag and it's against Rehoboth. We'll see if it was, but it was uh, after the uh, fumble. Yeah, personal foul penalty after the personal fumble. Foul on the that's a dead ball foul. That means it's after the play. And so our, our Rehoboth will still take over the thing. But it was a lead option to the right, and, and Peters turned it in. And you've got to wrap both, have both hands on the ball. And then uh, he, and the, the defensive man hit the man right, hit the ball, and it flipped out, and the big lineman got it. Could you tell who got the ball? Uh, Rebels will have first down on the four-yard line. So Rehoboth will start deep in their own territory after recovering a fumble and uh, committing a penalty post-fumble uh, penalty. And, it will move the ball back to about the four-yard line. So it gets 96 yards of real estate ahead of him. And another flag. Flag on the play. Back to the wing T still. That was, just a, that was just a sweep in the wing T, but it's really not a sweep. It's more like a wide lead is what it is because they flip it back to the back and all of them pull. It's the old Green Bay sweep in a way they used to run years ago with Vince Lombardi. And, and uh, didn't do a whole lot. Norfolk did a good job of turning it in, but, but the Cougars were offside, so it'll make it second and five. The so uh, the Cougars called for a violation. So we move the ball out to about the nine-yard line. And another flag. The laundry is flying tonight, Coach. It's early in the season, so yeah. I guess, you know, a lot of miscues and, and all. Now they're warning the Rebels to get back. Okay. Sideline warning. So they've warned both teams. Sal is here, the chief man of the state's here, and so I'm sure they're trying to make sure they do everything perfect. But anyway, it's uh, they got an unbalanced line to the right here again. It's the first and five. First and five, they run a 
a lead to the right. Pick up a couple of yards that time. Let's see who makes the play for Northview. Number 32, uh, Simons takes the handoff. That's getting, Tyler Simons on the carry, get, picking up a couple of yards. So it brings up uh, third, uh, second and short. Trey Brown in on the play, I believe, as best I can see. And uh, uh, Stephen Spivey was in on the play also. I don't know if Trey was in there, but Stephen Spivey was in on that play. Did a good job of turning the play. The ends are, are playing really well with the defensive end. And they hand the ball off to a pitch to number 10, and there's nothing there. There was a parish on the carry and nothing there. Cougars did a good job that time defensively. Stopping the play before anything could develop. Brown, Trey Brown does a good job along, uh, along with Stevens Spivey to stop the play to turn. That's just a lead, lead sweep to the left. It's really not a sweep like most people do it because it's right out to the wide, but it's a short sweep. They just pitch the ball and they turn the ball back in. It's uh, This double wing tight offense is, a, is a, just a power game. They try to wear you down with leads inside, power plays, pulling linemen, blocking down, pulling linemen. That's all this offense is. And, Northview's done a really good job so far of turning. The, what you've got to do is mash the play back down, and then pursuit from the inside's got to stop the play. And so far, Northview's done a good job with that. With timeout on the field with 531 left in the first, the score is nothing, nothing, Northview and Rehoboth. Bring up third and short for the Rebels of Rehoboth. Ball just shy of the 15. And they hand it off, and I don't know if he Got had any forward progress there. Did, Lima did a really good job of uh, stopping. I'm trying to see who the one on the bottom of the pile was. Yeah, they're going to call for a measurement. When it's that close, they're going to take a look at it. Got a little, little like that was Tyler Rivers in there on that play to, to stop that play. Did a really good job. I couldn't really tell who else was in there. Might have been Trey Brown. But did a really good job of stopping that play, and it's going to be close. It's going to be really close. But they all they did was just a straight dive play. They didn't pull anybody then, just a straight dive, and they did not get it. Yeah, short, about a uh, foot. So it will bring up fourth down, and Rehoboth will have to kick it. This drive started on their own four-yard line. They gain possession of the ball on a Northview fumble. And one penalty and got out a little bit. And I tell you, this, this offense, if you can't run a straight dive play from this offense, you're in trouble. So Northview's done a really good job so far of, of, uh, of shutting this thing down. It's the, the truth will tell the fourth quarter if, if how close Rehoboth stays in the ball game. And, and uh, because right now, uh, right now the front's Northview's front uh, is beating Rehoboth's front. Back deep uh, for the uh Punt is number two, Marquez White. White gets the punt at the 50, and he goes to the outside. He's down to the 40. He's on the outside, and he's got some running room ahead of him. He steps out of bounds at about the 30. Got a flag down, though, Mitt. Good, real good job of punt return there. There is a flag on the There's a flag. He, uh, that was about a... 20-yard return. And that kind of thing right is, it's usually a clipping of some kind or a hold, if that's what they're doing there. And, uh, a lot of mistakes early in the ball game. It's against the Cougars. Uh, like illegal substitution, but I don't know what. That's fourth line conduct. Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, so. That's not a, I, I thought that was. So I that uh, conduct. that voice, the the good return by White. So the ball of Northview will be starting at the 47 yard line. On the 47 yard line. Got a double twin to each side. Gunner Peter still been the still in the backfield. One back set back in the back and trying to see who that guy is and can't see with the numbers. Pass out to number 16 for the Cougars. That's, That's uh, Jonathan Carmichael. John Carmichael did a good job last year. That's a swing pass. The inside receiver just does a swing out and kind of a uh, uh, banana route, I call it. And then the quarterback hits him in a hurry. Picked up about two. Back now to double twins, one back set. Uh, Second down and seven. 
Oh, had some movement up front. Oh, uh, look at our right guard. Let the right guard for Northview moved. So another penalty called against the Cougars. That's five more yards. So that will move them back five yards. So it moves them out near midfield. A second down and long. Second and long for the Cougars. Four minutes, 21 seconds left in the opening quarter and the pass is completed over to number number nine adrian brooks gain of seven on the play just had two receivers to one side and one guy did an, in, an out route and then the quarterback hit him hit him on the run did a good job makes it third and long third and about five uh, Back to Twins to one side, and uh, well, Twins to both sides now. And I uh, know he wants them in the backfield, bringing two back in the backfield. Now he's bringing three back in the backfield, a power eye looking set. And they pitch it out to number nine again, and Brooks, and not much there. So it's going to bring up fourth down, and we'll see if they go for it or if they decide to punt. Jalen Fudge then turned the play back in, did a good job of turning back in the outside corner, did a good job of turning back the play back in for the inside player of, of uh, Rehoboth. Uh, Jarvis Brewer looks like been on that play, and, and uh, one of the other linebackers went on play. Uh, so uh, the Cougars going to go for it on fourth and about three. Yeah. Peters finds his receiver open. And he completes it over to Easley, number 23. Number 10, Peters, pass to number That's our uh, Kennington Easley. Uh, a couple of Easleys out there, number 23, Kennington. That's just a stop Easley. route. Just a long, just about a seven-yard stop. Did a good job. Good, very good, very good uh, timing route on that. And just raises up, hit the guy on about a seven-yard, turns around and just stops, and they hit him with the ball in timing. And Easley did a good job of getting the first down. And now we're back to trips to one side. No. Back to double twin. No, they're moving a lot. Now with trips to one side and single. Okay, Barna split to the right. Motion. And they hand the ball off to number 16, who breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, and gets inside the 15 down to about the 11-yard line. That was, that was uh, Jonathan Carmichael with a, a good catch and run. Carmichael makes a really good run. That's just that, All that is is a, is a sweep. And uh, did a great job of turning the corner. Missed a uh, guy, couldn't hold on. Uh, Drake Rogers from Rehoboth made the play. So it's first and 10 for the Cougars on the 11. A twin to the right. Got three men in the backfield, the, the uh, eye set. They hand off to number one, and he takes it up the middle and picks up a couple of extra yards with a little extra effort. That's Jarris Barner running the ball. Uh, really tough running there. Number one, Barner takes the handoff. A gain of about three yards. Tackle Looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he was really put forth some effort to pick up a, some good yards there. Oh, yeah, did real hard running there. They just, that's just a straight dive play up inside and picked up some yards, make it second and long. Hand the ball off the easily. He goes up the middle. That's Four. just all that is a dive. I couldn't tell if it was a trap or not, just a, a drive play. That was picked up. Me, that was yards. blocker number 28. Third and about four. They can get a North, you can get a first down be without back. scoring a touchdown. So Rehoboth wants a timeout. So with 2.05 left in the opening quarter, the score is Northview nothing, Rehoboth nothing. It's third and about three, Northview inside the, right on the uh, five yard line. I'll tell you about the offensive line in a minute. They're in a spread set. And, uh, and Hunter keeps it. And he stopped right shy of the goal line, but it's going to be enough for a first down. Uh, 
Good running, but good run by uh, Hunter, uh, Hunter Gunner Peters. Peters. It was, a, it was a dive option. He pulled it and kept it and got down to the one-yard line. I thought he almost scored. The offensive line for, for is Balmuth at center, Hutto, Grayson Medford, Justin Henson, and Ethan Holland. So that's the good guys up front. So uh, we'll talk about them a little later, and now it's got a first and go. Got a Peters on the carry, and he gets it inside the one-yard line. So it's first and go for the Cougars. And, a, and, and they take it in, and that's uh, quarterback keeps it. Really good job, quarterback sneak. Gunnar Peters does a good job. Just a quarterback sneak is all it was. And Northview's first touchdown of the year with Gunnar Peters. I thought they looked uh, pretty good offensively. I think they're they're wearing Rehoboth down a little bit early already. And uh, uh, I think the the uh, the way they're doing it might might tire Rehoboth out quicker than Rehoboth tires Northview out. Of course, now Northview doesn't have anybody going both ways, and Rehoboth does. Yeah, most of our Rehoboth uh, starters go both ways. And the extra point is blocked. It was uh, wasn't handled very well. So Northview goes up six, six and nothing with 144 left in the first. It's a, it's a low kick. Okay, we're getting ready for the kickoff after Northview puts together together a 53-yard drive, capped off with a one-yard run, a touchdown run by the quarterback. Garner Peters. Andrew Kennemore kicking off again. That kick was a little low a minute ago when he kicked it out. It got blocked, but it was a little low. I think he kind of missed it a little bit. Anyways, he's really improved on his kickoff down to the four. See who covers the ball. Perkins to... gets the ball and brings it out, and he finds a seam and gets it out to the 35-yard line. Uh, number 21, Maurice Fluelin was in position. Fluelin was in position to get him, but he almost broke that play. Game of about 35 yards. There is a flag on the play. And another flag. We've had quite a few of those tonight. Personal uh, foul on Northview. I don't know what that was, but uh, penalties have really really hurt Northview. They've had a couple of personal fouls and some uh, some things that shouldn't happen. But anyway, it's uh, it gives it gives hope with the ball in, uh, inside uh, Northview's territory on the 46. And that's the first time we're hoping this had any field position tonight. So that moves the ball on the Northview side of the field. Ball on the 46-yard line of Northview. They're back in the double wing tight, but they've got a split end. This, now they have two split ends now. Still running the double, still the tight. Got a uh, tight formation. Hunter Curran, a captain ball, and he pitched it out, but a whistle. First time for over that, it was a, a, a counter dive option. Quarterback reverses out and fakes the dive and comes on down the line and, and had Northview on his on his heels. A really good play and uh, almost busted that thing and something happened. I think somebody moved on the offensive line or either defense lined up offside. One of the offensive linemen for Hoboth or wide receiver moved. That's a, that's a, a, a big break for Northview because uh, they had Northview out of position on that play. It's a counter dive option, like I said. So that ball, that moves the ball back on the Rehoboth side of the field after the makes motion it, penalty. Makes it first and 15. Now the twin set to the right, and they're in a, well, really just in a basic, uh, basic twin to the left with a, it's really a, I can't tell you, one back set. Really a pro set eyes, what it amounts to. Quarterback drops back, and it goes through the hands of uh, number 26. That was Sheely, the intended receiver. Or oh, Darius Rhymes was a defender defending it. Uh, Darius is a, uh, is a defensive back, a senior, 5'9", 160. Second and long now. It's just a, that was a quick stop route is all that was. Court, uh, route receiver went out about five yards and stopped. 132 left in the opening quarter. Northview's leading 6 nothing. Really a pro set to the left with a one-back set. And they hand the ball off to Perkins, who's hit by number 44 of Northview. That's, uh, that's Marvin Bush did a really good job of tackling. Then did a great job of tackling. That was just their short, their short sweeper lead is what it really is. And Rehoboth kind of, I thought, had Northview kind of off balance there on that play because it's the first time they've ran it that way with that formation. But Bush did a really good job of filling the hole. 
So it brings up third and about 13 for the Rebels. This is uh, back to double wing tight again. Everybody in there tight. That basic formation to start of the game with. And they get the ball over to number 25. And that was, that was 32 with the pass and 26. Sheely with the reception and uh, it's going to bring the ball inside the 45 down to about the 43 yard line. If we have a little difficulty uh, calling the names because the area we're in that is not lighted and we're having a hard time seeing our roster. So. That was a sweep screen. Sw ran a sweep to the right and turned back around and threw a screen pass back to the left. A little bit dangerous, but a pretty good play. They picked up some few yards off of that. I'm, the free safety for Northview made the play. I can't tell who it was. I think it was, uh, uh, might have been a pre-show Brown. I think it might have been who it was. Okay. So we're at the end of one, and the score is Rehoboth. Nothing, Northview six. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to Rehoboth High School where the Rebels are hosting the Northview Cougars. Hi, I'm Mick Kirkland along with uh, Coach Harry Wayne Parrish. And uh, Coach, uh, first period uh, quarter wasn't a bad one for the Cougars. They made quite a few mistakes, but they were able to, to put some points on the board. I thought, it was, I thought it was pretty good football for both of them. I thought both of them made some mistakes. Rehoboth can't get off the Northview's defense. Their front, their front group of, uh, of linemen, uh, James Tillman, Trey, uh, Trey Balcom and Antonio Glasgow has done a really good job of, of, of containing the plays up front because they're running such a tight offense. But I thought it was a pretty good ball game the first quarter. It was. It was. Uh, Northview made a, a big mistake uh, early in the game, a fumble deep in, uh, deep in Rehoboth's territory. But Rehoboth was not able to capitalize on it, and Northview was able to get the ball back. And that time they were able to put some points on the school board. I think Northview's going to make them kick again. It looks like they are. They might not. But uh, uh, they were in, Rehoboth was in motion on the punt, so I don't know what they're going to do here. And, uh, they decline it. They decline it, so, so Northview will take over the ball on about uh, mid on about the 22. No. 23-yard line. So Northview takes over on their own 23. Right. Got those linemen up front, you know. We got those big old linemen. Medford, Henson, Holland, Hutto, and Balmuth is up there at the front. A good front bunch there. Good, good bunch of uh, good football players. Back in the spread. Making the speed sweep. And they give it to our number 20 for Northview, and he picks up about three or four on the on the uh, play. What they did, they put a man in motion and faked the speed sweep and handed it to the other back coming around. So it's really just a, uh, it's really kind of a counter dive in a way, but uh, uh, got a motion, got a penalty. I think we got a motion on Northview or holding. I don't know what I couldn't tell. Another flag on the Cougars. They have just been plagued with uh, flags tonight. Yeah, just uh, tell us the first ball game, a lot of mistakes. Of course, you know, they play so many preseason and they have so doggone many uh, passing camps. It seems like a lot of this would be shut down, but uh, still a lot of penalties. They do a lot more than we ever did. I didn't like preseason games very much, Mitt, and I didn't play many of them, and I didn't, uh, I didn't like the many of the passing camps. I worked on ourselves more than I did against somebody else. And right. They do it a little different, these young coaches do, than I did, but that's all right. That's the way things are now. The flag is on the Cougars. Kind of holding. We'll have second down. Second, second and 20 for the Cougars. There. Holding penalty. Got to keep your hands in tight. Uh, double twin to each side. And uh, Peters keeps it, and he gets it out to the 30. Got a dive option. Really good job of running the play. Dive option pulls it, picks up about 15 yards. Really good job. I'm trying to see who made the play for, uh, for Rehoboth. It was in the secondary. Rehoboth's uh, Jalen Futch, I believe, made the play. Him or Nicholas uh, Hams, one or the other. I couldn't really tell. But good job of dive option. Down, Quarterback keep. Third and five for the Cougars. The ball on the 30-yard line. 
And they hand it off. And that's to our number one. And he's going to take it down to the 25-yard line. All that is is a basic lead play from the spread four major. <coughs> that was Barner. Just a lead play, lead back. He hits a hole real quick. And a real good job of blocking the offensive line are really coming off the football. That's, I'll tell you what's the best I've seen them look in a while. Balmuth, Hutto, Medford, uh, Henson, and Holland. I'm proud of them. Uh, and good job of running by, by Jarris Barner. Barner. Really good job. Yes, he picked up 38 yards on, yeah, great job. on that play. So the ball inside the 30-yard line on about the 27. Northview with the ball. Double twin on each side. <clears throat> and they hand it off to number 20. Just a dive play then. Looks like they have a face mask penalty or a hold in one. That was Easley on the carry. He picks up about six. Big Easley. And another flag. Linemen are coming off the football. Uh, the, uh, Bob Moose is senior center. He's been starting since the 10th grader. And a couple of those guys have played a great deal. But got a pretty big size offensive line this year. And, and uh, they really have improved. I'm proud of them. You know, Henson is, all, some of them guys are special in my heart. And I, I know them pretty well. So, good job. See what the call is. I'm supposed to like conduct face the face mask. That's what so. I thought it was, yeah. So, that will add more yards on to the run by the Cougars. And that will move them inside the... 15 at the 11 yard line. So got a double twin set. No, got one twin set to the right with uh, two men in the back with three with three men in the backfield. They're running a kind of an uh, power eye set. You know, in a kind of a power set with two backs. It's the same. Oh, and that was a big hit that time. That was a uh, Bonner on the carry. I didn't. I didn't get the number of that truck. Allen. Dewante Allen is the one that got him. Really good play. That's the same lead play they just ran for 38 yards a play before, two plays before. But this time, Island stepped up and, and, uh, and did a really good job of, uh, of contact. Yeah, they did a good job of plugging the hole that time. Sure so, did. Uh, a short gain, a gain of about a yard. So it brings up second and nine for the Cougars. Back the same set, two back backfield and eye. Faking that, throwing the post pass. And Peters completes the ball to number 81. Number 10 to number 81, Martin. on the reception. Fake the, fake, the di fake the power play that they've run, they've ran for the long run and play before and threw a quick post pass to the split end. A really good play action pass and almost uh, scored. If the ball was thrown a little bit behind him. But Peters is doing a good job of controlling this offense. So third and short for the Cougars. They can get a first down. Peters takes it in for his second touchdown of the night quarterback sneak i think they'll probably go for two i'm not mistaken he 12 to nothing quarterback sneak to the left uh over those big linemen got ball move and uh hutto medford henson and holland really good job of them controlling the line of scrimmage that's the difference in the ball game anytime you have offensive linemen control the line of scrimmage then you got a you got a pretty good offensive football team the backs are doing good quarterback i think looks sharp so they're wearing their hobos down a little bit so the Cougars are going to go for two. Their last uh, extra point attempt was blocked by Rehoboth. Trips to the right. Sprint out pass. He rolls out, and he finds his receiver open. That's uh, number one, Barner. And uh, so the two-point conversion is good. All he did was slide out of the backfield in the flats. Hits him real quick on a sprint out pass. Really good job. That's a good pass on the goal line to call. And uh, they get their two, puts Northview up 14 to nothing. Peters did a really good job along with a, with the line and, and Barner to get them up 14 to nothing. Great start for Northview so far. Okay, we're getting ready for the kickoff. Got again, we're kicking off again with, uh, with uh, uh, Kenamore. He's really improved his kicking this year, I can tell you that. It's already the first last one down inside the four. This one's down to the uh, down to the Great two. Kick down to the one yard line and he brings it out to about the seventeen. Number eighteen, Kenamore kicks off. Number yeah. twenty one Perkins picks it up, returns. Perkins on the return. 
He brings it out to about the uh, I think 17. I think Turner Benson made that tackle. I can't really tell the numbers. But he made the tackle on that. About a 16-yard return. Kick off. Back on the uh, 14 to nothing, nine minutes left in the – we need to, I reckon, do that more, Mitt, than we are because they don't see the scoreboard. Nine minutes and 18 seconds left in the second quarter, up 14 to nothing. And uh, double wing tied again coming back out. Uh, uh, Northview's defense is coming in there. And, and a pitch back to a number two who looks like the ball came loose. Yeah. Northeast point it's saying they recovered it and the official confirms it. 36. Corey Whitehurst made that fumble recovery. They ran the, the, the power sweep in there and, and uh, same thing, but cutting the ball inside. And Northview's defensive line has done a really good job of turning this play back in. Bacon, Tillman, and, uh, and Glasgow has done a really good job. And then, of course, Corey. Whitehurst did a really good – done another defensive lineman in there, did a good job of hopping on the ball. Northview's got a chance to really, really come up and get ahead of this thing. Okay, Northview takes over on the Rehoboth 22-yard uh, line. And Peters keeps it. He goes around the outside, and he's still on his feet and takes it down to about the uh, six-yard line. Dive option again. He pulled it, and uh, they're not closing the end on the backside. And Peter's seeing that and pulling the ball to come in. You've got to come. You've got to have somebody to cover your quarterback if you're going to run that. If you're going to defend that option, and and uh, Rehoboth's deep backside defensive end is not closing, or ever who's in charge of it, and, P and Peters is taking advantage of it. Got a second first down on the on the what the six trips to the right, twins to the left, no back set. So this is just the second turnover of the game. Uh, Northview had one in the first. Uh, quarter and that's the first one for Rehoboth and Peter keeps it and he takes it in for his third touchdown of the game from about uh, seven yards out. Speed sweep, fake the speed sweep, Peters keeps the ball, cuts back inside. The key to that play, he's doing a good job of running, but the key to that again is the offensive line, doing a really good job. Wide receivers are doing a good job of blocking also. We've got uh, Kendra Martin in there, Jay Goslin, they've done an outstanding job along with, like I was mentioning, the linemen before. Balmuth, Hutto, Medford, Henson, and Holland, Ethan Holland, Justin uh, Henson, Grayson Medford, John Hutto, Rick, Ricky Balmuth, Kendra, Gandre Martin, and Jay Goslin. So, extra point uh, is up and good. it's good. Kenamore does a good so, job of kicking it in there. His first first extra point of the year. He got it up then, then, and it was a lot better. Pretty good job of blocking up front. Northview takes a 21 nothing lead. So Northview took advantage of the. Uh, Rehoboth miscue and took it in. Only took him a couple of plays, Coach, to get it into the end zone. I tell you, Northview is executing offensively as good as I've ever seen them, and they're playing good, strong defense. The key to them, which they didn't do last year, and I hate to go back to last year, but last year they didn't ever stop anybody, so you really couldn't. But this year they've done a good job of stopping people, getting getting from fumbles, giving Northview's offense a chance to kind of come alive, and they have came alive. I think they, the offensive play calling is excellent. The, uh, the new coach they've got have done a really good job. And, uh, and Peters has done a good job of running this offense. He was a defensive back last year, and I didn't play much quarterback. So Rehoboth will uh, be receiving the ball deep for Rehoboth. There's number 21, Corey Perkins. And uh, they've got to try to get something going uh, here offensively. They've, they've done a pretty go good job defensively, but they've turned the ball over, and they've missed a couple opportunities to get in better field position with uh, penalties. Right. That's been the turn. That's been the tail of the ball game. That when and Northview's wearing them down. The, the miscues that Rehoboth made and wearing them down because they're having to play kids both ways. Here Coach Kennemore kicking. He went down to the one or two last time. Now Mitt, let's see if we can get him in the end zone. Right, and Perkins took it out to about the 17, and Line the ball drive. goes over to number 26, and he's going to be tackled at about the 28. Uh -huh. Sheely, Corey Whitehurst, Corey Whitehurst made that play. Really good job. Line drive kick down about the 20, and Corey did a good job of breaking down and get on the guy. When you cover a kick, you've got to break down and, and be ready to, the, especially a line drive. So very, very good job of Northview of backing them up. And Rehoboth's in trouble right now. They're, they're playing a lot of kids both ways. They're running the double wing tight offense. They're not running Northview down because it's three and out, and Northview's wearing them down. So right now, Rehoboth's in big time trouble. Okay, uh, the Rebels are getting set up to start, and 
number 10 into the game. That's uh, Parrish. Timeout, Rebel. Got and Rehoboth wants uh, timeout. So with uh, 8.30 left in the uh, first half, the score is Northview 21, Rehoboth nothing. Okay, we're getting ready to resume the action after they hope at the timeout. They'll be starting on their own 29-yard line, 28-yard line. Two split ends from the double wing tight. Lead option play. Uh-oh. And uh, the pitch is a fumble, and Northview gets it. That was just a counter dive option. That's the one they caught Northview off a minute ago earlier in the ball game. But then they had it executed pretty well. They just uh, just dropped the ball. It wasn't a bad execution. Uh, it's kind of hard to be ahead 21 nothing and run a dive option down there because if you fumble, that's what happens. But if you make good play, you make a big play. So it's a little gamble for, for calling that play, but uh, it could have worked real good. But this, on that play, it didn't work very very good. That's two straight turnovers uh, deep in their own territory for Rehoboth. Uh, they fumbled the ball on the 17-yard line uh, on that previous possession. And uh, this drive, they fumbled it uh, right at the 20 nine-yard line. Glasgow made that recovery on that fumble, so a really good job. Speed sweep. And it's kept. It's a keeper, and number eight goes to the outside, and he picks up some big yards there. Jalen Harris is in there now. He's the quarterback last year that uh, played all year. Outstanding job there. They ran the lead. lead. They fake the lead sweep. The, I mean, the speed sweep, and then he keeps the ball. Gunner has done a good job with it all night, and Harris does the same thing, pulls it out, and does an excellent job of uh, running the ball. Again, the offensive line and wide receivers have done a really good job of blocking. Uh, Martin and jo Goslin have did good in the wide receivers. and uh, There was some question whether Harris was going to play tonight uh, or not, but uh, he's out there, and he just made a big play. And a big defensive play that time by Rehoboth, number 32. They handed off uh, to Barner and nothing there. Big loss. Tyler Simons makes that play. Did a really, that's a speed sweep and just gave it. But Simons did a good job of coming across the line of scrimmage and stopping that play. That's the first time Rehoboth has done that. But it's really only the, about the second time Northview's ran that play. They've done a lot of faking it, not actually giving it. So a loss of about... Uh, a loss of 11, so it moves the ball back outside the 20 to the 21-yard line. Trips to the right, no backs, no back set. Harris in the back, making the speed sweep. Harris finds the receiver open right down the middle, and he takes it in for the touchdown. That's number 20. That's uh, Easley. Caleb Easley. What that was was a, was a faking the lead sweep, the speed sweep again, but then he raises up and hits the guy on a, on a – on an inside route and uh, right up the seam. You're kind of trying to find where the free safety is in the other corner. You get right in the dead area, and then he fakes it, and the linebackers come up, and you hit right in the dead area, and it's a really good play call. Outstanding uh, play. Harris did a great job of throwing and, and uh, easily a great job of catching it. Very good play. Very good play call. You got Rehoboth. You know, when Simons came up and made the play a minute ago, Mitt, that told the Offensive co coach that uh, that they're coming up in a hurry, so that's what he did. He caught North, he caught Rehoboth off balance because they're coming up to do the lead sweep. That means when they're having to bring nine on the line of scrimmage, somebody's open in the secondary, and that's exactly the play he called. And really good job of play call. And uh, and uh, Rehoboth and uh, Northview has really got the handle on uh, Rehoboth tonight. So uh, uh, Northview's picked up uh, 14 points off turnovers. Yeah, yeah. Should be 14 to nothing, really are. Northview driving the ball could be a little bit more, but Rehoboth looks a little down right now. They're not really, uh, but you know, they're, they're having to play a lot of kids both ways. They're running the double wing tight, which is a wear down offense, but they're not wearing Northview down because they're in off the field. They're fumbling and not getting them on the field. You know, wearing that offense, you've got to wear somebody down. If you don't wear them down, the offense is not very good because then that, because you're getting, you're you're on and off the field. You're not throwing. The, you're not you're not taking a whole lot of time off because you're fumbling the ball. So Northview has every advantage right now. Let's see if uh, my man Kenamore will kick it fairly deep this time. So what Robert's got to do is just kind of settle down and try to maintain possession of the ball and put together a good drive to get some kind of momentum going before the end of the half. And he kicks it in the end zone. 
That's, so, the, that's the first time I've seen Kenmore do that in three years of kicking. That was the first, that's his first one in the end zone, so we need to mark that down. Uh, Thursday night, uh, what is it, August 23rd, he kicked one in the end zone. That's fantastic. So maybe he'll do a lot of those this year. He has really improved his kicking style. But he's gotten stronger, older, and he should. He's, he's, he's older. So Rehoboth will be starting on their own 20-yard line. They are trailing 28 to nothing, 718 left in the first half. The Cougars of Northview right now are definitely in control of this game. Yeah. And then and Rehoboth's still trying to stay in this offense. They've got to get some first downs to rare Northview down. Their defensive line of Northview is doing an outstanding job of they're running a 5-2 defense. They give it to Perkins, and he goes around the right side, and he's met by a host of Cougars. You know, you've got the uh, – You've got uh, Precio Brown, uh, Cameron Morrison, Tyler Rivers. Uh, he, he, he made a good play then. Trey Brown, like I said, Tyler, the defensive lineman. They're doing a good job of turning the play back. Tillman, Balcom, uh, Glasgow, Truett. They're doing a good job. They're running a 5-2 defense. That means there's three guys up, five up front, three down line with a nose guard and two others in there. And they're just playing good fundamental defense, just lining up and beating Rehoboth off the ball. And that's how to stop this double wing tied offense. So it brings up second and nine for the Rebels over Rehoboth. Back in a 5-2, really a 5-4, really. Run a sweep to the left. And he pitched it to uh, Perkins and looked like he was going to get away, but he was able to maneuver and pick up a couple of extra yards. Again, that's the sweep, but it's they're turning it back in. You don't really run an actual sweep around then. You turn it back in off the outside guy. And he turned it back in then and almost had some things. You've got to get the inside out to stop that, and, Nor and Northview's done a great job of that. That's the worst I've seen him do, but that wasn't bad. Uh, I think Apricio made that play, but uh, so it's third and long, third and th three. But, they, but Rehoboth's got to get a first down or two. They've got to wear Northview down to even have a chance. Right now, they're not even close to that. Northview's hadn't been on the field, but probably 20 plays. So we have timeout on the field with 5.55 left in the first half. The score of Northview, 28. We're hoping for nothing. So it brings up a third and three for Rehoboth. And back in the double, they got two spread. They got two split ends. They're back, still in the tight formation, but they spread two men out uh, and running the wing tight offense. Curran drops back. And uh, 12, it's incomplete. It was intended for number 26, Marcus Shealy. White and uh, White and Howard Newsom was out there on that play. All that was was just a fade pattern. He just raises up and throw it, a really a one-step drop, and hangs it and tries to hang on the outside shoulder and tries to beat the uh, – evidently they just noticed the Northview's, Northview's defensive back playing inside and trying to just hang it there. And, but uh, – that stops the clock. I mean, you know, we got five minutes and 30 seconds left, and they stop the clock and give Northview a chance. They needed a first down there, and they didn't get it. So it puts Northview in a great position. 28 to nothing, five minutes and 30 seconds left in the second quarter, and here we are punting. Good snap. Gonna get away from the ball. Number 12 is uh, did a great job of snapping. Jonathan Curran was the snapper then and did a really good job of popping that ball back there. Well, now we have a now we have Northview in control of the ball game. On the 48 yard line, five minutes, 15 seconds left in the in the half. And uh, first and ten on the 48. Jalen Harris back there at quarterback. Trips to the right. No back no back set. Same Harris motion. is in his quarterback, and he drops back. He goes long, just out of the reach of his intended receiver, and that was Carmichael. They're, they're running all their stuff off right now this half. They're running all their stuff off the speed sweep, as I keep saying. Speed sweep is trying to get the guy around the end. But they had a play action in. They faked the speed sweep and had Carmichael just run a deep fly or, or kind of a shallow post, I call it. And he was wide open. All he had to do was hang it a little bit, but Jalen had a little too much not enough air under it. Need to have a little more air under it to hang it up fair and let him get it. But it was a good play call and a really a good pass, just not quite enough air under it. Second down and long. Harris drops bike. He decides to keep it. He goes to the outside and he's out of bounds 
at the gain of about three or four. So he goes out at about the 45-yard line. Came back with the same play action with a little different patterns. I couldn't really tell the pattern, but but uh, came back with a little different pattern. But Jalen pulled the ball down. He's got a little rush from the outside defensive end and pulled the ball down and took off and almost and picked up about five, about four. So it's third and six now, I reckon, now mid, isn't it? Third and six. Third and six. Harris still in as quarterback. Double twin to the right and left. Taking a screen pass here. Hit him. Good job. He Good picking up. Block. Receive open. He's Block. First down, and he could go uh, down to about the 20 yard line. Great play call. Very, very good play call. Ran the screen there, and them big old linemen got on down there. And I tell you what, I bragged on them all night, but they're the difference in this ball game, and they need to keep improving. They're far from where they need to be, but Valmuth, Hutto, and Medford, and, uh, and Henson, and Holland did a great job of getting down there. I believe that Medford made the play down there, the good, really good block, but there was two or three really good blocks. So first down, really good play call, really good execution. First down on the, on the 25. Trips to the right. No, twin, double twin. Harris still in for the Cougars, and he keeps it. He goes up to middle, and he gets a first down, and he's going to be inside the five-yard line. Uh, well, just shy of the five-yard line, down to about the six, a gain about uh, 20 yards on the play. Looks like Rehoboth had a personal foul. Dive option. Dive option. Gave the dive guy to take the dive guy. That play's worked all night long with Peters and Harris. And got down to about the five and then uh, got a personal foul on Rehoboth. And I think it's going to be a first and on about the two because uh, it'll be half the distance to the goal. I believe that's the call. And, yeah, I'm right. So, then, so it'll, be, it'll be first and goal on about the two-and-a-half-yard line. And, and uh, Harris is still in there at quarterback. And I tell you what, Peters and Harris have done an excellent job of running this football team. But I'm not bragging on just them. The offensive line have given them an opportunity to run this football team. Now we're in a power eye set. Harris under the center on the two and a half yard line. And and they nothing there. But he he fought. He fought me. Who was that getting the ball? Can you tell? I, I couldn't tell. Blocker. Blocker blocker carrying it in there then and down about the well he he had to fight for yards. Got hit right, in the backfield. Right. He got down to about the uh Two-yard two line. It was just a counter dive there on the goal line down that old Fort Florida State play, and, and he fought to get some yardage. I mean, if he hadn't been, he knocked in the back for about a three-yard loss, but a really good job back in the power eye. And offensive line need to show it now. They need to come off this football hard. Second and goal. And they did. And, and I uh, scored, touchdown. Yeah. I tell you what, the best play they got is just quarterback sneaking and all the linemen coming off. They're just a really good job of those linemen. Uh, Really proud of all of them. They're, they got all to have their heads up. Really good job. Who Harris. Took, Harris took that one in. Harris took it in quarterback. Really okay. good job. Really good job. I couldn't see. It was a, a pile there. 34 to nothing. Northview is just, is just uh, right now is just too much for Rehoboth. Rehoboth's whole problem is offensively. They're not giving, getting Northview off the field. Uh, they're not keeping them off the field. And then Northview's defense has done a good job of three and out or getting some thing. Kenamore does it again. Uh, another, he's gotten, after the first kick tonight, he's really improved. Now that ball was up high enough to get it through and good job. Norfolk prepares to kick off after Jalen Harris takes it in from about four yards out to put the Cougars up 35 to nothing. Kenamore kicking off again. See what he does this time. He kicked the last time he kicked in the end zone. Well, Hope just hasn't been able to uh, get in a field position tonight. They had well, good field position on one possession. Kicked and another one in the end zone. That's two. I was going to tell you, Mitt, that uh, that Zach Shira was the kicker on the last one. He's a tenth grade defensive back that played soccer last year and uh and uh and i'm glad they got him out i tell you what you get a good soccer kicker he's been kicking all his life and they can kick it i tell you what that's a lot that's that really really that's a beautiful kick he had on the extra point it was really high and long and so uh uh good kick very good kick but three minutes and 58 seconds left or 50 seconds left and uh norfew is rehoboth Again, I'm saying that they've got to get a couple of first downs. They've got to control the line of scrimmage. They're not doing that. If they don't do that, Northview will just keep pounding them because 
North, he's not even close to being tired. North, uh, uh, Rehoboth hasn't been able to put together any kind of a drive tonight. They've turned the ball over three times. North Skew Views put up 14 points off of uh, two turnovers. Right. Well, Northview is, uh, this offense for Rehoboth is geared, is, ge is geared to keep the ball. You have to keep the ball. You run the clock out. You wear the defense down. And then eventually you, you take over the ball game. And it's been the opposite for Rehoboth. They have not kept the ball. They have not had any, hardly any first downs. They fumbled two or three times. And it's not a fumbling offense. It's an offense that you don't really fumble much. And uh, they have done the opposite. And when you do the opposite, it's kind of like running the wishbone. When you do the opposite and you want to control the line of scrimmage and you don't, then you're in trouble. And you fumble, then you're really in trouble. First and ten for the Rebels. And they get it. The Corey Perkins, and he's breaking it. He's down to the 40, and he keeps it inbounds and goes out at the 35-yard line. Just ran, the, just ran the power power sweeper, power lead. I think I'm on. Power sweeper, power lead. And, uh, and he cut back against the grain. Northview's done that bad a couple of times. They hadn't really, they over, they love, they over pursued then. Now you've got to be ready for the cutback on this offense and did a good job. Though they were substituting, they had some younger players in there and uh, they had some younger players in there and uh, that might have had something to do with it. But that's good. They need to have some younger players in there. So uh, that, was a, that was a good run that time by Perkins. Uh, and he put Rehoboth in the best field position they've had all night. Ball at the Northview 35. 335 left in the uh, first half. Timeout. And we have a timeout on the field. First and 10, the ball at the 35-yard line of Northview. Fumble the ball. And uh, Rehoboth fumbles it, but that time they were able to get back on it. Loss of two yards. Double, double wing tight again. You know, it's just, it just shouldn't be fumbling the ball. It's just a tough offense to run if you fumble the ball. But Northview's defensive line has done an outstanding job. Those guys, those guys up front, uh, Balcom and Tillman and, and, uh, and Glasgow, has done a good job of dominating the line of scrimmage. So it's uh, a loss of two, uh, loss of three on the play. So it brings up second and 13. Ogletree's in there at linebacker now, and that really helps. There looks like a young guy. And that's the counter. That's and they fumble again on the uh, handoff. That time, Curran was trying to get it over to number 10, Parrish. And so two miscues on two consecutive plays. And Norfuse, the, the line, the, looks like they almost handed off to one of the linemen in the backfield back there. Uh, looks like Tyler Ratliff. 10th grader, I believe, is who that was in there. So it brings up a third and 16. This drive is definitely going in the wrong direction. And, boy, two big hits, and it's a flag. It's going to be uh, unnecessary roughness on that one. The quarterback got hit and the receiver both got hit pretty hard on that play. The new rule, you can't lead with your head, and I thought, I don't know, he must have led with his head down there instead of his shoulder pad, and you can't be helmet to helmet. It looked like it was a helmet to helmet lick, and this new concussion law is really, really, uh, rules have really been tough on it. Now, what they did, Rehoboth just ran two out of the backfield up and ran flare passes or deep deep fly passes and run a play action and almost had a pretty good play, but he kind of, the quarterback hung the ball up and, and uh, defensive back hit him a little, uh, what happened is uh, that was a lot of pressure on the quarterback that time. He was just, he was barely able to get the ball out of his hands before he was hit. And then uh, that was a big hit on the intended receiver. Where? Number two. So oh. that will move the ball inside the 20-yard line, down inside the 15. That was Marquez White that hit the lick. That was a really good Really good football play on him. He hit it at the right time. He just he just led with his head a little too much. And, uh, you know, it's hard to teach not to do some of that when you've got a thing coming right at you. But uh, 
I thought it was just a, it's just one of those penalties, but you know you need to still be careful doing it. But it was a they're back in a spread set with a with the uh, Rehoboth got a timeout. So this is the deepest penetration that uh, Rehoboth has had all night tonight. They're inside the 15 on about the 13 yard line. The Rebels with the ball on their own 13 yard line. A little over two minutes left in the half and they're trailing 35 to nothing to the Cougars of Northview. Got two split ends. They ran the fade pass. And touchdown. it's complete touchdown to number two from uh, 13 yards out. The defensive back for Northview. This ran a fade pass, just a, just a quick fly pass. And, uh, and Northview's defensive back looked like to me we're not ready for the play. I don't know why he just, what happened. Anyway, it gave uh, Rehoboth the score right before half and it's 35 to six. Let's see what they're gonna do. We'll go for two or kick it. Just a real quick, quick fade pass is all it was. And we just had a, a defensive back out of position. So Rehoboth gets on the scoreboard with two minutes left in the half. Extra point up and no good. Extra point is no good. 35-6, Northview. Two minutes left in the half. It's a 35-6, Northview lead. So we're hoping to get ready to kick off after they score on a 13-yard TD pass. And that's number nine. Checks it out. That's uh, uh, Butler. Adrian, Adrian Brooks. Adrian Brooks. Brooks. Can't Brooks. see, Coach. It's dark. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I, know I was exactly. trying to see. So, so the Cougars would start on the 27. I think uh, Peters is back in there at quarterback, looks like. Gunner Peters back in at quarterback. And that last uh, series with Rehoboth, Rehoboth had a good, strong run. They got down there, had a bad, Northview had a bad penalty. And then they had a great pass and catch by the uh, wide receiver and the quarterback. And it got caught Northview off, uh, off guard a little bit. The defensive back one lined up properly and bam, touchdown. So that was a, a, a good offensive series for Rehoboth. And, that's the kind of thing Rehoboth needs to do to keep theirself uh, and eventually wear Northview down a little bit. The only chance they've got to win the ball game is to wear them down. They've got to keep them, keep Northview's defense on the field. And uh, that, that scoring drive was all set up by a great return by number 31, Corey Perkins. Oh, yeah. He was able to get the ball down into Northview territory and a couple of penalties uh, helped Rehoboth and it moved them inside the 15 down to the 13. And... Uh, Curran was able to uh, find his receiver open for the 13-yard touchdown. Really good play call. Very good play call. Now, Northview's got it back with a one minute and 50 seconds. They've got Gunnar Peters back in there. They're in uh, twin set on what offensive lineman they have in there. Peters goes long and it's incomplete intended for number 81. Throwing a throwing a no play action then just a straight drop back fly pass and Peter Peter Stover threw him and uh, one minute and 48 seconds left with uh, head 35 to six and stopped the clock there. Uh, I think Northview's trying to get a quick one somehow to kind of take a little momentum back from Rehoboth. So it brings up second and ten for Northview. He goes for number 23, uh, number 10, and that's uh, Kington Easley. Easley. That's just a that's just a fake the play action speed sweep. They love that play action speed sweep and hitting easily on a fly pass, and it was a really good uh, uh, good play call. Just a little bit bad thrown, thrown off to the side, and if he could have led him a little more to the outside, it might have been a touchdown. Anyway, third down and long, and uh, back in there, good play call, but. Um, one minute, 32 seconds left. They might be giving Rehoboth back the ball here with some time left in the half. Third and 10 for the Cougars. 
and a screen pass over to number one, 81. He breaks a couple of tackles, picks up the first time, but there's a flag on the play. Like a motion. Kendra Martin is the one that caught the ball on a quick screen pass, wide receiver screen. That's the play that uh, Alabama has so much trouble defending. Huh? So it's a heck of a play when everybody's just kind of a, he released everybody, hit them real quick, and then he turns up the field in the seams and really good play call too. And, and uh, got a motion on Norfie bringing it back. He'll make it third and 15 now instead of uh, third, is that a first down? Yeah, it would have been a first down. Mm -hmm. So we're down to a minute 20. They've got Rehoboth really off. They don't know where, where they're going, whether they're on the option or the screens, and they're doing a really good job of mixing the plays up. And, and, uh, and, and in defense of Rehoboth now, they're playing both ways. They've got to be a little tired. They don't, they don't look like it right now. They all seem to be doing pretty good. But uh, in the third and long, let's see what they call now. We've got double twin. That play run to the seam was good a minute ago. They can hit, it, it's... Peters gets some pressure, but he stays on his feet, breaks a couple of tackles, and makes a positive yards out of it. Good job, good job of Peters of, of not throwing the ball up and just trying to bring the ball down and get something out of it. Really good job and picked up, and he really fought for yardage. Got to hold that ball tight and fight for yards. Now it's fourth down and 50 something suckers left. They need to let the clock run down as far as they can, and and let's try to get in half where we are and not have anything, not give her hope with the opportunity to do anything. And that's what they're doing, I think. 38 seconds left in the half, 37 is going on down, 34 keeps moving. So uh, we hope it uh, doesn't have anybody back deep. Uh, Northview's letting it run down before they kick it. And uh, let it don't run down so they can run the clock out. Smart play, good coaching. Uh, there's no reason to give Rehoboth the ball with much time when you got. So uh, Northview calls a timeout with 18 and a half. Seconds left in the half. Okay, uh, Northview get ready to punt. And back deep is number two for Rehoboth. Uh, he, he had the touchdown. I can't see his name. Drake Rogers. Drake Rogers, Rogers. Yeah, he was the one uh, made the touchdown. And the ball goes to Rogers. He picks it up and... Good effort. He's going to be brought down at the 33, but there's a, another flag. Picked up by number two, Rogers. No game. Antonio so, uh, making that stop for Norfew. Really good coverage. There was a host of them down there. They really good coverage uh, on that. I think uh, Coach White to see how bundled they were. If he could have got to the left, he might have done some damage, but did a really good job of, uh, of covering the kick. All of them hustled down there and and uh, did a really good job of trying to run it back. The good effort with a uh, kick returner. We've got some kind of penalty now here. I don't know what it is. Are they doing something? 6.8 seconds left in the half. Uh, holding on Rehoboth. I don't know how they could hail when I don't know what they, where that was, but that had to be uh, the guy was back there by himself. I didn't see anybody holding the, uh, the less <laughs> <laughs> Oh, blocking the back. Oh, blocking the back, yeah. Well, I started to say, huh? Gunnar Peters is coming in at free safety now for Northview. Uh, 6.8 seconds left. Let's see if they go for it here. Uh, just take a knee. And Rehoboth takes a knee. So that will end the first half of action. So at halftime, the score is Norfolk 35, Rehoboth 6. And we'll be right with halftime activities after this timeout. Hello and welcome back to Rehoboth High School where the Rebels of Rehoboth are hosting the Cougars of Northview High School. Hi, I'm Mick Kirkland and along with uh, Coach Harry Wayne Parrish and uh, Coach, the uh, first half belonged to Northview. 
Yeah, there's no question about it. Uh, Rehoboth made some uh, big miscues, had too many uh, mistakes. The, the tight offense they run, they run a double wing tight. I had somebody at halftime ask me what kind of offense this is. This is a double wing tight mm -hmm. offense, and it's an offense geared to control the football and make no mistakes. Well, Rehoboth did the opposite. They didn't control the football, and they made some mistakes. So when you do that, this, this, puts, this, this puts this whole team in jeopardy, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, quickly, uh, uh, recapping the scoring drive, Northview scored their first touchdown with 144 left in the first uh, on a run by Peters from one yard out to make it 6 nothing. They missed the point after. They scored again uh, with 9-19 uh, left in the first, uh, within the second, on a three-yard TD run from Peters. Peters had three touchdowns in the first half. That made the score 14-0. Uh, uh, they uh, converted on a two-point conversion. And uh, they scored again with, um, let's see, 8-38 left in the first half on a... Peters run from seven yards out. Uh, Rehoboth uh, fumbled again. Northview got the ball and was able to take it in from 21 yards out. It was a 21-yard TD pass from Harris to Easley with 7.18 left in the half. And Northview scored again on Harris when Harris took it in from three yards out with 8.50 left to make it 35 to nothing. Rehoboth's only points came with two minutes left in the first half, a pass from Curran to Rogers, 13 yards into the end zone for six, and they missed the extra point, so the score stands at 35-6 to six as we get ready for the second half. Oh, the kick's off, and oh. There is a flag. And a flag. <laughs> we've, we've had way too many of those tonight, both on both sides of the ball. So, well, you, I, you know, what bothers me most about all the flags that we have, as much as they do, like I said, much as they do in the summer, that we didn't do when I was coaching. Some of these things, you know, shouldn't be happening. But at the same time, the excitement of the first game is not different than just playing in the summer. So, uh, doing things in the summertime. So, uh, that has a lot to do with it. And Northview's getting it again. We got, we got Harris back deep, I believe, and. Uh, Along with Easley, I believe. Brooks. Brooks is back deep. And the kickoff. And Brooks and gets the ball. It goes to Brooks, and he cuts through the middle, and he could break it. He's going, going, and he's being chased by Perkins, who takes him down at about the 10-yard line. Really, really good run back. The offensive line did a great job of getting back and giving him a hole. And he took off and went down to the 10 and almost broke it. The uh, safety man for Rehoboth, safety man for Rehoboth, I think Corey Perkins made the stop to, uh, to stop him. So here we are. Aaron Northview gets back, comes right back out of half with a little momentum. Uh, comes in here and he got Jalen Harris at quarterback, I believe, this half, starting this half off. And uh, see what happens. Yep. Harris is at quarterback. So Northview will be starting on the Rehoboth. Uh, 11, uh, 11 yard line. Right. After a uh, big return by Brooks, an 80 yard return by Brooks. Run eye formation from the, from the gun. Uh, two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Harris hands it off to Barner, and Barner runs over a defender and takes it down Number to the five. The Offensive line really came off the football then. I saw all of them coming off really good. They, they, uh, again, again, those guys of, uh, of, uh, of Hutto and, and Medford and, and Henson and Ethan Holland and Bob Meath all came off the ball. I couldn't tell which one pulled then, but they, it's hard to tell the numbers where we are here. But somebody pulled around, did a really good job of putting, it, putting, it, putting their bonnet on somebody and uh, driving them out. And got a second and five. Carmichael back into the game for the Cougars. First and ten, the ball at the second and uh, goal at least, and the ball at the five-yard line. And they hand the ball off to Barney. He takes it up the middle down near the goal line, and it's going to be just shy of the goal line. Got the same lead play. Just ran it to the right over right guard, pulled the backside guard, 
block down, pull the guard, turned up in there, and pretty good play. Pretty good play. Uh, they got a third down and short. They can get a first down. Uh, don't have to score. Right, the uh, first down marker is just shy of the goal line, so they can get a first down without putting it in the end zone. Double twin set here, going on what they're doing, probably quarterback sneak. That's what they're doing. And you called it, and uh, Harris takes it in from a couple of yards out, and that's his second touchdown of the game. Their best play on the goal line has been just coming off the football and driving them off the ball and let the quarterback get behind them and go and and uh, did a fantastic job. I, I'm so impressed with offensive line. I've said that all night, but uh, uh, that's the difference in our offense this year and last year. One of them is our offensive lines really improved. And uh, uh, and I, I like both quarterbacks. I don't see any any problem with either one of them. I think both of them are doing a good job. And, and uh, backs have done well. Wide receivers have, have came up, stepped up. So, uh, and the, the new kicker. And there's a flag on the play. Let's see, is it? Shower is the new kicker in there. The kick to uh, see what he does. It's, it's only the second time I believe he's kicked in his life on a, in live situation. So uh, he'll get better and better if he if he has the opportunity to do that. And 41 to six right now with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left in the in the second in the third quarter. And, It's been a long night for the Rebels and a, a real impressive night for the Cougars. The extra point is up and good. So it's 42 to 6. Northview leads Rehoboth. Gunner did a really good job of catching the ball. The ball hit the ground. He picked it up, put it down, and on the tee. And the kicker, if he hadn't kicked very long, did an excellent job of getting it off. It was a really, really good offensive play that last extra point. Northview set it for the kickoff after a uh, touchdown, a two-yard TD run by Harris with 10-18 left. And that was all set up by a great return, an 80-yard return by Brooks on the kickoff to begin the second half. Kennemore kicks off, got a high driving kick down to about the 10. And uh, goes to Perkins who avoids a couple of tackles, and he keeps moving and moves the ball out to the 32-yard line. A good return that time by Corey Perkins. Received by number 21, Perkins. Return for about 22 yards. And uh, I believe Mar Maurice flew, Maurice flew in and made, made that tackle, I believe. From the 32-yard line. Good drive and kick. Pretty good coverage. We uh, uh, They've improved on their coverage. Got a 10 minutes and six seconds left in the third quarter, and they're coming out. And let's see where they're coming out with one, with two split ends, with the same uh, double wing. It's just not tight; it's just spread. Got a pro, uh, tight end to the left and a uh, uh, wing to the right, and run that option. And uh, nothing there. They plug that hole up pretty quick. That's a counter dive option. A quarterback reverses out. Fakes the lead to one side, pulls it sometimes, and comes out and pitches it or he gives it. That time he gave it. And uh, that's the play they picked up big yardage on, or fixed them pick up big yardage on when they made a mistake early in the half. They ran it the other time down here and fumbled. And uh, this is about the fourth time they ran it. They picked up yards one, one time, and that was a penalty on that one. So uh, pretty good play. It's hard to defend. So it brings up second and nine for we're hoping with the ball on the 39, uh, 34 yard line. Two split ins again, double wing, drop back pass, stop route. And it's complete over to number 26. And he keeps his feet moving and gets out near first down. Curran uh, over to uh, Sheely. Just a quick stop route. Uh, I don't think he quite picked up the first down. He might have. I don't know. You can already tell. But, you know, quick stop route. But I tell you what, all the Northview guys got up and hustle to him. You just got to they got to get him down when they get to it. So they're going to have to measure for this one. Nine minutes left in the third, and it's a 42 to six Northview lead. That's what uh, Rehoboth's got to do. They've got to control the football and keep the ball away from Northview. And they, they obviously they have not done that all night. And uh, Northview's not even close to being tired. And uh, and that will keep the clock running. 
and try to get them where they got at least a decent ball game out of this. Well, well you know, uh, 14 of Northview's first 20, let's see, was first it 14? Down. That's the Rebel first down. Of Northview's first 21 points were off turnovers. Right. And that's what I've, I've repeated myself several times, but this is an offense you shouldn't turn the ball over. You can't turn it over. And, it's, and you, you're really so in tight close and you're wrapping the ball up so in tight quarters that you really shouldn't be fumbling because you're not doing a lot of pitching and catching. First 15 for the you're Rebels, just uh, – and when you do, it's so tight. It's real close, like handing the ball off, really. Uh, back in a double wing with a spread. Two, spread is two split ends, and they're doing the same thing with double wing tied into the uh, – Tied into the right, wing to the left. So it really balances it up. Fullback gets right behind the quarterback. And he ran a sweep. They handed it to Perkins, and he cuts to the outside and cuts back to the middle and picks up uh, enough for a first down. Now that's the, that is the, uh, that's the sweep. Uh, couldn't tell who made that tackle. That was a sweep. Whitehurst made the tackle on that. It's a, it's a, uh, that was a true sweep. That was a true outside sweep. That's the first time they've really done that all night long. I think it's the way Northview's defense was lined up, though. Eight minutes and 48 seconds, 42 to six. First down, Rehoboth. This is what this offense is geared for. Run that clock, run that clock, keep the ball away from the first people you're playing, and that's the deal. Two split ends. This drive started on Rehoboth's uh, own 32-yard line. They've moved across midfield into Northview territory. And Rehoboth wants a timeout with 8.28 left in the third. 42 Northview, 6 Rehoboth. Rehoboth has the ball first and 10. The ball on the 46-yard line of Northview. They hand it off to Perkins, and he cuts back to the middle, and he's met by a bunch of Cougars. And uh, he, he may have picked up a yard on that play. That was a double wing. That's just a counter play. Quarterback reverse side, give it to the back, coming back across the grain, pulling both guard and tackle. And, and Luton had been his old counter play, running from the eye, but he'd run it from the double wing tight offense. And old Perkins runs hard now. I tell you what, North Northview's defensive line is, has done an outstanding job of, of, uh, of hanging in there. You've got the uh, same ones I mentioned, Tillman, Balcom, uh, Glasgow, Truett, all of them are in there. And, have done a really good job of, uh, of uh, shutting this offense down. Second and eight. Curing keeps it. He gets to the outside, and he gets up near another Rebel first down. Number 12, Curran keeps the ball for this, a this is, game. It's a counter dive, a counter option. He kept the ball then. This is what this offense is run like. Now, now they're running the offense properly That's and, and uh, look really good. Northview doesn't look like they've made a lot of adjustments at half. I don't know if they think they got it won or whatever, but I, uh, and they probably do. But still, they need to play hard every play and get better. Uh, you can't you, – you're behind, really. That's how you want to play, so you'll improve. But they got a lot of teams facing down this, down this road here. A lot different than Rehoboth as time goes on. So uh -huh. it brings up a first and ten, the ball at the 35. Curran drops back. He goes deep. And uh, we're going to have a flag, a couple of flags. Uh, like a, 12, it'll be, it's going to be pass interference. Looks like a pass uh, interference play, but he caught the ball. So he might have been in bounds, but it was a pass interference. But it looked like it'd probably be better. Did to he catch it? Looks like he did, yeah. Yeah. Thought he did. It was just a straight fly pass, just a fade. They've run that play three or four times. They ran it to the left three or four times, two times. And then this time, the first time they ran it to the right on our left corner over there. And, uh, Pass interference uh, on the Cougars. Give the Rebels another first down. Yeah, other side. Huh? Other one. So that will advance the ball to about the 21 yard line of Northview. So another first down for Rehoboth. They're moving the ball. They did a good job of, uh, of, of uh, throw and catch them. The defensive, will have first and ten from the 21-yard line. Defensive back looked like a pretty good position. Just uh, just, just kind of got it thrown out over his head there. And, and my little bit pushing and shoving that they played tight. Double wing tight now. The true double wing tight. Short and they sweep. pitch it back to Perkins, and he picks up a couple. 
short sweep there and, and uh, Number uh, Perkins on the carry. Spivey made the play and along with uh, Newsom. 647 left in the third, 42 to 6, Northview leading Rehoboth. Double wing tight. I mean, it's like I, I'm repeating myself, but this is this is a truly a great offense right now, the way they're running it. Northview needs to, they've got to start turning it. But the inside out, you turn the play back in, which they want you to, and then you inside inside people have got to make the play. And right now they're not doing it. We're hoping it's kind of taking it to them. Curran keeps it, and he's going to be taken down at the line of scrimmage. Counter dive option pulled out and uh, probably should have should have pitched it, but he turned around and kept it. And when he did, Northview's pursuit did a really good job of turning it in and and uh, shutting the shutting the play down. I believe uh, uh, I believe Balcom made that play. So it, it's a uh, third and five. So with uh, five fifty four left in the third, it's forty two to six Northview. Third and five for the Rebels. Spread, spread formation. Back to the fade. And now it's a quick out this time. Quick out. There really is. good throw and catch by Carrington. Good, really good play. Uh, pass, number 26, Sheely. Sheely on the reception that time. And it's enough for another first down. Curran, Curran uh, did a really good job. I think uh, the Balkan that made the play on the, from the, seven -yard line. the defensive back. But that was a good job of uh, just a good out pattern. Good timing pass. Look really good. I think Rehoboth's really uh, settling down. So it brings up a first and goal. The ball at the seven. And they hand it off to number 32. Number 32 Simons takes the handoff. Simons and uh, two yards. he gains two. It's counter dive, just a Brings counter dive. Second and uh, second they've been pulling it and running the option off of it. Second they've been giving it. Yeah, second and goal at the five. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm impressed with Rehoboth with this drive. They've really, uh, really came alive and and uh, doing a good job. This drive started on their own 32-yard line. Yeah. Back to just two split ends with the tight end to the right, wing to the left. Post pattern. Curran is going to be taken down for a loss. A good defensive play that time by number 44 for Northview. Number 12, Curran. Bush, Bush made the play on that. Did a really good job of containing the quarterback, keeping him from going to the outside. And he had the guy beat for just a second. And then uh, Curran, he, he got in Curran's face so quick he couldn't get it off. So it was a, a really good defensive play by Northview and a good play by Curran really not to throw it. So that moves the ball back out to about the 15-yard line. It brings up third and goal. Their best play has been that fade pass. And, you know, that's not what they might come back with. They might come back with a – with a fade out here to the left is where they've hurt Northview with the most. Uh, I don't know if it was a bad, bad play or not, but uh, uh. and there's a timeout on the field with 3:57 left in the third. It's 42 Northview and uh, Rehoboth six. I don't like a two, does it? Marquez wide option to the right, lead option to the right. To and uh, Curry takes it in for the touchdown. Curry Perkins takes it in from 15 yards out for the touchdown. All that was was a lead option to the right. They took the quarterback. He pitched it. Good block on the wide receiver out there. The, uh, the wide receiver for Rehoboth, I can't tell who it was, did a really good job of blocking. He got blue from him and did a really good job, a great job of running. Perkins is uh, an outstanding back. There's no question about that. He's a heck of a basketball player, too. He, he, he is. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yes. He's an all-around athlete. That's a, that's a great thing. But uh, uh, I know Wayne White's disappointed. They, they, they didn't, they're not coming out here playing really hard this half. But now it might have to do with Rehoboth. They might be coming out here playing hard. Two, two split ends with a wing. Uh, we go for the two-point conversion. And... Uh, Quarterback threw a little little stop route out there to the wide receiver and and uh, an incomplete. Did a good job of. Uh, Number twelve pass incomplete. Two point conversion no good. Marson I think was out there covering on the left corner and did a good job of, of covering the play. And uh, three minutes and forty seconds left in the third quarter. So uh, Rehoboth put together a Rehoboth Rebels six to eight yard drive. 
to uh, put some points on the board. They missed both extra points tonight. But the score is 42 for Northview, 12 for Rehoboth. Rehoboth set to kick off. You got Brooks back again for Northview along with uh, uh, White, I believe. Is that White over there? After a touchdown, a 15-yard run by Perkins. See if Northview can bring this one back. They had a kickoff return already this half, about 80, 60 yards down to the 10. Right, Brooks on the on the uh, last kickoff uh, took it 80 yards, and then Harris took it in from about four yards out for the touchdown. And there go Brooks again, and we have a flag, and he takes it down to the 32, but it's going to come back. There was a flag at about the 35 or 45-yard line of uh, Northview. Uh, Brooks did a really good job of following his blocking offensive line, curl back, and did a good job of blocking. A really good wall there. Somebody probably hailed or hit him hit in the back. I couldn't really tell, but uh, uh, the referees tonight, like, like they like to be seen tonight. They're excited about <laughs> pulling and flashing. You know how I feel about that. Uh, I'm not a positive on referees when they throw a bunch of flags. I think you can play they, play if you want the to. flags have been flying today. Yeah, I don't really... I kind of wonder if Salva Reese is sitting down here watching. They're trying to make him happy. But, okay. But that's, uh, that's opinion now, Mid. I'm getting okay. running out. <laughs> Holding call against Northview, so yeah. that'll back them up 10 yards. So they'll start at their own 35. But if they held, he held. It was at the point of attack. You need to call it, and that's what they probably mm -hmm. did. So anyway, double, double it's twin. First and 10 on double 35. twin. Gunnar Peters back in at quarterback. First time we really had a lot. Second time we had an offensive play, but they're back inside their own uh, 40. Peters hands it off to, uh, I didn't get that number. That was uh, number 20. Number Easy. Caleb Easley. Easily, yes. Easy. If he could have cut to the right, he had a big hole. That's just a dive option. And they're reading, they're reading the backside in and, uh, of course, they're blocking up front. But if he could have cut back to the outside, he might have gone a good bit of yardage. It, they're really coming off the ball. They're dominating Rehoboth's offensive defensive line. I think Northview would probably try to keep it on the ground to yeah, use some clock and yeah. try to get this game down. over. Yeah, run this thing on down. Just practice there. Flag. Uh, somebody probably lined up in the neutral zone. We'll, we'll see what the call is. Offsides on Northview. Wide receiver off. Uh, must have lined up offsides. So that would nullify the five-yard gain. It will move them back in. If you're talking to the referee, you don't have those make kind it of penalties. Us. You get on the line, tell them I'm on the line or off the line, and you don't have those kind of penalties if you're communicating with the referee and the one on the sideline, the, the line judge, and evidently they're not communicating. Now they did. I saw them then do better. So it's a double twin, dive option, keep the ball. And that time, uh, Peter. Peters kept it. He would have picked up some more yards if he hadn't have slipped. Yeah, he read. They're reading the nose guard a lot of times, or the, or the three technique, or the guy lines up on the guard. If he takes the dive, he pulls it. If he doesn't take the dive, he he uh, he, he gives it. And that time he took the dive and he pulled it. I believe our hope had a nose guard then, and that's a that's a really good option football play. That's a, a lot like the old timey beer in a way, but uh, they run it from the gun. So it's a. Gunner, if Gunner could have kept his feet, he might be still be running. Yeah. Carmichael is back into the game. They may try to hit him. Yeah, I see Carmichael. And, and he, he does find Carmichael, and he drops the ball. Yeah. He was open, and he could have picked up a first down and probably some more yards. I think he started running, Coach, before he caught the ball yeah, that time. Yeah, you get excited because he had to, he, that's what he did. He got a little excited about it. And a uh, really good throw. Just he got a little excited, dropped the football, and made it fourth down. So back we're giving Rehoboth the ball. This is what Rehoboth wanted to do the first half. Yeah. And, this, and now they're doing the second half, but they're behind 42 to 12 doing this. So, uh, but I thought that was a, a pretty good offensive series for Northview except for the Little mistake. They stopped themselves. Rehoboth didn't stop them. They stopped themselves. I think this would be the first punt for Northview tonight. I believe it is. I'm trying to find who's the punter. Hurtow's the, the punter. punter. He gets off a 
Good punt, and it takes a Northy roll back to the 15. And uh, whoa, must have a face mask. Uh, number 56. But, uh, you don't see many times big lineman, big lineman punting, punting the ball, and Big Hutto's kicking it. And uh, uh, he's a baseball player, catcher in baseball, and a uh, good athlete. So you can tell you he's eye hand coordinated. He must be more coordinated than his dad. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'm kidding him, kidding him, kidding his dad now. But he, he's a good looking athlete. And, uh, face mask. Face mask on the table. Yeah, call yeah. that. Got a minute and 30 something seconds left in the, four, in the third quarter. And, uh, this is a big drive for Rehoboth right here. They're giving them, giving them ball over the 30, and this is a big drive for their offense. Uh, yeah, I think I talked to his dad before the game, and he told me to mention, uh, make sure we call his son's name. Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. We'll get her to. Uh, he gave me $10 to say something. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, we got to split it. Where's my five? <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay you later. I've already spent it. <laughs> uh, all right, we, he's one of the big offensive linemen has done so well tonight too, and uh, all them linemen have playing a 50 defense and they run a screen here and an inside screen. And Norfolk did a really good job of defending that. That was a great job. It's, that's what they call the the slip screen. They call it, you know, where they all just kind of let everybody go and go far and try to hit them in seams and go up the field and uh, and uh, had a pretty good play going. But Norfolk's defensive back, I believe it was. Uh, Spivey. Spivey did a good job of stopping that. So it brings up second and nine, the ball at the 31-yard line, 32-yard line. 50-something seconds left in the quarter. Second down. And, and it's a high uh, snap. And uh, we'll see if they call it for intentional ground. They call it incomplete. But good pursuit that time by the Northview def uh, defender. Bush had him, I believe. Is that Bush had him back. They did a good job of containing him, and uh, I couldn't see anybody. But they got all the backs up close, so the backs had to be somewhere around. Down to 42 yeah. seconds left in the third. So it brings up third and 11 for Rehoboth. Curran, he keeps it in. He's going to be dropped for a loss. They run the lead option then, just a straight lead option. And uh, Norfie did a great job of, uh, of defending that. Had a man on the quarterback and the pitch. Curran, Curran had no choice. He just had to turn and get what he could. And looks like he's bunched up a little bit. They probably ought to be careful with him because you don't want to lose the season on this quarter here. It's uh, Be careful on your players you're playing because it's uh, – it's out of hand, Norfie. They're not. Rehoboth doesn't have a chance to win. They just need to get better, but they need to. They need to play a lot of kids if they can to get to do improve. They might not have a lot of kids to play. So we're winding down to the final seconds of the third, and at the end of three, the score is Norfie 42, Rehoboth 12. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of action after this That's timeout. Hello and welcome back to Rehoboth High School where the Rebels are hosting the Cougars of Northview. Hi, I'm Mick Kirkland along with the coach Harry Wayne Parrish and it's been all Cougars but the third quarter was a good quarter for the Rebels. Yeah, real good quarter. I thought Rehoboth looked really good offensively and uh, carried the football around and uh, looked after the football, ran some good plays, good play calling and uh, really they outplayed Northview in the third quarter. Now we got a got a penalty down here. I don't know if it's a holding or whatever it is, but Northview just got a good punt return back and uh, there's a flag down on what it is with it's with it's holding on Northview or, or um, and you you need to throw a lot of flags early in, in the season to kind of help them but you know the game's 11 minutes 45 seconds left you have to watch out what you how many you call Okay, uh, that will move the chains back and Northview back holding. on that side of the uh, field. Kind of holding on Northview, brings it back to the to the uh, about the 38-yard line or less. No, down to the 30. Oh Lord, back to the 33. Okay, so Northview will start on their own 33. I 
got some new offensive linemen and they got some younger offensive linemen in there. Harris back in at quarterback for the Cougars. He hands it off to, and they fumble. And we'll see who gets it. Rehoboth gets the, recovers it. Deep in Northview territory. I couldn't really tell what happened. Was Jalen didn't get the ball there or uh, what happened? I was watching offensive line. I really didn't tell what went on there. But anyway, it was a miscue. And uh, so Rehoboth gets the ball at their, at a Northview's 31 yard line. Yeah. So this is the best start they've had all night. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the second turnover for the Cougars. Yeah. They had a fumble in the first half, and but Rehoboth wasn't able to capitalize on it. We'll see if they're able to uh, take advantage of the miscue this time. They give it to uh, Perkins. He goes to the outside. They spread him out before he could get around the corner. And well, they they're gonna uh, let's see when they're gonna spot the ball. A good job on Jack Wes White. They ran a sweep, and Jack Wes White came from from a long way to make that play to knock that knock him out of bounds, and uh, just tripped him up. So that was a really good football play. That's the first time Rehoboth's kind of got outside the containment for Northview. Northview hadn't hadn't let him hadn't let him hadn't let him get around that corner very much. So Perkins picks up five. It brings up a second and five. The ball at the 27-yard line of Northview. They hand the ball off to number 32, and it's stripped away. Fumble the ball. And uh, I think he was able to get back on top of it and recover his own fumble. Spivey did a good job. Linebacker Spivey, appreciate all of them, did a good job in there stopping the defensive line. Same group in there. They're all doing a good job. They might have a couple of young ones in there. Uh, uh, Ratliff might have been in there. I can't really tell who all. 68. Tyler, Tyler Rat lives in there now. Uh, Tyler Rivers. So it brings up third and four for Rehoboth. The ball on the 25. Curran drops back. He goes deep. And uh, we have a flag. Looks like to me that was an offensive penalty then. Uh, well, well, we'll see what the call is. Uh, it's going to be against the Cougars. Oh, it looked like the wide receiver hope was pushed off, but I really couldn't. I wasn't down there, so I don't know. Defensive well, pass interference. Uh, pass interference on the I didn't think that was a very That's good call. From what I saw, the, the wide receiver shoved him. But anyway, he was down there on top of it. I'm sure they sure they uh, saw what they saw. So it's a 15-yard penalty. So that'll move the ball down to about the 10. Well, the 13. The Rebels will have first and 10 from the 13 yard line. We're down to 10 minutes and 20 seconds left in the fourth. The Cougars on top 42 to 12. We hope it's in the red zone after an interference call against the Cougar defense. On a sweep to the they give it to the Corey Perkins, and he goes down the middle and gets down to about the one-yard line. It's enough for a first down for the Rebels. Just not, uh, not playing hard this half. The defensive line and linebackers are not stepping in and filling the holes this half. They kind of let Rehoboth uh, do some things they did in the first half. But Rehoboth really seemed to be coming off the ball better. And, and, uh, it's kind of game Rehoboth wanted to play, but it's a little too late. But anyways, 40, it could be 42-21 or 42-20. Uh, onside kick a thing or two might change some things. Corey Perkins. Man, that was a good job. Good job defensively then. They ran this tall sweep again to the inside tall sweep, and now Northview feel the hose there. Perkins takes the kick, gain of about a yard. Brings up second and goal. And the two-yard line. The ball on the two, second and goal. 
five and a, uh, nine and a half minutes yeah. left. Still want to know work on the goal line defense right here. They're in the still in the double wing tight. They're still coming at them. Norfie's breaking the huddle, and uh, Rehoboth's up there running the same power offense. Quarterback sneak. And didn't get anything. Good job then of Norfie's defense. Nose guard, everybody did a really good job. Clock's running, 9.05 left. And uh, Norfie's really tightening the ship right now. And they need to. They need to work on the goal line and, and uh, make it hard for them to get in there and get some confidence for the year. Third and goal, the ball on the one. Rehoboth's threatening to score. They scored uh, in the third. Northview has not scored this half. Yeah, they scored the uh, Did they? third quarter when they were they uh, we run the kickoff back, the opening kickoff back to the 10. Fumble on the play, so uh, it's fourth down and a loss of a couple of yards on the play. First series of the second half. Yeah, Northview has not scored the second half. About the first series of the second half they scored. No, mm-mm. Uh, yeah, they, they, they had 42 at halftime. And oh, I was thinking they scored the first series. We're dropping down no. to the 10, didn't score. Right. Rehoboth has put up uh, two, uh, two touchdowns this half. Okay, I knew they did, but Wait, I... Wait, TD, no, no, if you did. Okay, Harris had a touchdown. I'm sorry, Coach, he did. I probably did. They run the opening kickoff back to the sprint out pass. Got a man open out there, but oh, good job. Really good job by the defensive yeah, man. Nice, Looks like uh, that's Marson. Yeah, good job by Marson, I believe. Really good job of coming up. The guy was open for a second or two, and he did a good job of coming across, uh, coming across knocking that ball down. So uh, Rehoboth turns the ball over on downs, and the ball was inside the uh, five-yard yeah, line. Yeah, that was a really good defensive play by Marson then to knock the ball down. They ran a deep, just he sprinted out, and you know, they all came to the corner of the end zone. And uh, he, was, he was open for a second, but he, uh, he just didn't uh, get it there quick enough. And, and Marson had something to do with that. Now Norfolk's got the ball backed up and see what they can do. And he got Gunnar Peters back in there. Peters keeps speed. it and goes up the middle. He breaks a couple of tackles, and he could take it all away. He's down to four. A great block that time. And he's still on his feet. And he dodges a couple of players, and he's down at the 30-yard line. Great job. Just a basic quarterback sneak. Number 10, Peters. And I had a flag. Got a flag. Another flag. At 60 yards. Tackled by number 50. A great effort by Peters up the middle. He made something out of nothing that time. Really good job. Got good speed. He's a lot faster than his daddy was. <laughs> <laughs> I they, 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 they waving the flag off. What were you saying, Coach? I said I coached his dad, T.W., so he's he's a lot faster than his dad, I'll tell you that. Because I ain't saying a whole lot. <laughs> no, I'm kidding with him, too. Uh, but he, I can say what I want, I suppose. But anyway, they, they – uh, Good-looking athlete, good-looking run, and beautiful blocking. And i tell you what I was proud of of all that is Rehoboth hustled. They hustled back here to stop him from scoring. They could have let him go, and they didn't. That tells Coach Rummel something about his team. They're, they're not totally giving up the ship here. They're, they're trying. And uh, that gives you a little bit of effort. And they'll, they'll get better if they'll continue to do that. So it's uh, first and ten for the Cougars. A handoff to uh, Easley. Is that at number 28? Blocker. No, that's the 28. I can't number see my blocker. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, blocker did a really good job. Of, uh, really good option play. TW handed it, and they read in the nose or the, or the three technique. And then if he, if he doesn't take it, he gives it. And that's what he did. And picked up some good yardage there. Beautiful run. I know if he's kind of loosened up on offense, looks better. I don't know. Hope was getting a little tired, though, too. They. They're having to go both ways, remember, so they're a little bit tired. Yeah, I think that uh, goal line stand kind of knocked yeah, the wind took, out of them. Took, took, took a breath out of it, sure. Really, did. they had really good momentum going. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, number 30 for Rehoboth. Uh, uh, Dewante Allen does not mess around. He is a good football player. He, he, he came up and made a, he's made some good plays and played fullback tonight. He's, he's really has done some 
Outstanding plays for Rehoboth. So it brings up second and eight for the Cougars. The ball inside the 10, just shy of the 10-yard line. Six minutes left in the quarter in the ball game. Northeast, North yeah, coming out double twin again. One back set. Quarterback, everybody's out. No back set. Making the speed sweep again. And, and uh, uh, Peters keeps it. And he's being pursued, and he's going to be thrown down. But uh, I think he may have gotten a yard out of it. It looked like he was going to be thrown for a loss. But I think, he, he's, I think he's supposed to read the backside in, and I think he did the first time tonight. He didn't read him very good. He helped, kept and he should have given it. I think that's a read play, but I'm not sure. I'll have to ask the coaches. But uh, if it was a read play, then he should have given the ball. But if it was a Watton, it was a got a hold with man down. Uh, he's not moving. We need to find out what the deal is. Okay, it's time out on the field with 534 left in the game. It's 42 for Northview, 12 for Rehoboth. Okay, as we uh, resume action after the injury timeout, the Come Cougars on. have the ball inside the 10 on the 8-yard line, and it's a third and six. Connor Peters faking the speed sweep again. Got the post pass open. Those Beautiful pass. pass, complete in the end zone to number 23. Good job of running a good post pattern. Good throw by Easley. I thought Rehoboth did a pretty good job of defending it. So uh, they run a play action off that play action off that speed sweep and very good uh, pass and catch. And Northeast score, scores with five minutes and 26 seconds left in the game and go up ahead 48 to 19, 48 to 12, 48 to 12. So that was a good. This drive started on the four yard line. Yeah, the astounding drive. It really, I think, helped him. Got better and better. Zach Shira kicking, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Did a good job of getting the ball up. He does a really good job of getting the ball up in there quick. Uh, well, Northeast. Northeast Cougars 49. Rabbit Rebel 12. So uh, Northview takes a 49 to 12 lead with uh, 525 left in the fourth. Northview uh, capped off a 96 yard drive. Uh, Peters completed a pass to Easley, a 13 yard pass for the touchdown. Kennemore kicking off again. He's kicked two in the end zone tonight, which is a great thing. He, I can remember couldn't kick about 20 yards. He's gotten better and better and better. And uh, improved. Peters has, has run for three touchdowns and passed for one, so. Good job. Good job of defending down there. Good job of coverage. Uh, I think, uh, I believe that was Marquez White down there. I can't really tell from here. But it's been a good night for Peters. Yeah, I thought so. It really I thought, has. I thought Jalen Harris played good, too. I thought both of them played good football. Uh, Peters has played more this half, but. Uh, but uh, I thought they both they got two good quarterbacks. Harris had two touchdowns in, in yeah. the uh, when he was in. Yeah. I think the key to the whole ball game has been the offensive line and the defense. The defense has kept that I give the offense plenty of chances to, to move the ball and, and, uh, and the defensive line. I thought the defensive line has played outstanding football most of the time. Not the, not the third quarter probably, but, but most of the time they played fairly good. So. Uh, so the lines, I think, were the difference in the ball game. The two lines dominated Rehoboth. So Rehoboth has the ball on the 28-yard line, their own 28. They give the ball to Corey Perkins, and he breaks the tackles, and he's still on his feet and gets across the 50 down into Cougar territory, and down to the 48. They're, they're, they're substitu substituting a lot of uh, players. Northview's got a lot of young guys out there, and I can't tell who all they are, but he's got a uh, uh, Perez Reynolds, I think, uh, Brockton Hodgson. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Foster, Foster. There's several of them out there. I can't really tell. And so they got their second defense in there. And, but I'll tell you what, O Perkins now, he's a go-getter. He's a hustling machine. He, If he would have been fresh then, he would have probably scored. But he's kind of – he's in great shape, though, going both ways. And run that sweep again. And, Picking up good yardage. That was a handoff to number six. Fields takes it. Darius Gary's in there. and uh, Darius Gary's in there. Tyler Ratcliffe was in there. 
Trying to see all the linebackers in there. 30, uh, uh, Christopher Matheny's in there. See him in there. Uh, can't tell everybody. I'm trying to get names. Uh, Trent Ogletree's in there. And a handoff to... Good hustle. They're hustling. They just got a... Uh, they, that's the second defense in there playing, and they're doing... They're doing pretty good. They're they're improving. Number 12 is Austin Beaker. That was number 10, Pierce, on the carry. It's enough for a first yeah. down. We're down to four minutes left yeah. in the game. It's a 49 to 12 Northview lead. And Rehoboth has the ball in Northview territory on the 33-yard line. Northview substituting a lot of guys and and uh, try, trying to get a lot of guys in the ball game here. And... Uh, Fumble on Rehoboth's part. Good job then. A lot of hustle then by uh, uh, Darius Gary. Got in there and hustled. Got up under him. Got in there and hustled. Fumble snap. Recovered by the Rebels. 97's in there. 97. Jamel Truitt's in there. Jamel Truitt's in there. I'm trying to call some of these names out. I hope I don't miss anybody. Uh, 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 Michael Reynolds is in there. I see him. Some of these young guys are getting some playing time. That's really good. You need to play them, you know, if you can, and that's what they're doing. Down to three minutes and ten seconds. Second and nine for the Rebels. And it's a bad pitch, and Perkins picks it up and saves it because that one could have uh, been disastrous for the yeah, Rebels. That could have been it. I tell you what, old Perkins is playing as hard as he did the first quarter. He's a really a tough guy and a really good athlete. Very impressed with him tonight. He's, if Rehoboth could get his whole team to play him like he's playing, they, they would be really, uh, really good. He's, he's been going at it all night, yeah, full speed. Doesn't loaf, and that time he could just let the ball go, but he got back on it. Uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left, third down and 10, third down and forever. Third down at 15. Pitch back to Perkins, and he's, he's still up. driving. He ain't going to loaf now. He's got, he almost Number broke it. He did. He, he did, Coach. It. If he could have put his hand down and kept his balance, he might have could have got it all the way. He's a hustling machine now. I'll tell you what, he's very impressive. Gain of 11 yards. It's going to be short of the first down, probably about a yard and he's a short. He's a senior. So fourth and one. Six foot 160. I wonder what kind of grades he's got. I don't know. He's, a, he's, he's definitely a good athlete. So with two minutes left, it's 49 to 12. Northview's leading. Rehoboth. I'd have a JV in there. Okay. It's uh, two minutes left. Well, they got the JV quarterback in there, the young quarterback. Two minutes left in the game. They're running a sweet, tall sweep. Yeah, they got the young guys in there. And that's a good job. And uh, he's still going, yeah. and he takes it down to about the 10 yard line. Enough for uh, Rehoboth first down. Good job of running there. 12 yards. That was, uh, that was Drake Rogers, senior running back. Good job of running the ball. The Rebels will be first and 10 on the 11 yard line. So it's uh, first and 10 at the 11. And fumble the ball. it looks like a fumble. Rehoboth has it. We're, we're down to a minute 12 left in the game. Second down and 10. That's someone they've taken yeah, off. Yeah. Uh, Coach wanted yeah. Rehoboth players. Might be just a heat thing. They give it to number 23, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Number 23, Reynolds. Reynolds. Lost two yards. Brings up third down and 14. Third and 13. We're down to uh, 
35 seconds left in the game. Northview's leading 49 to 12. And hand the ball off to number 15, and he's going to be stopped at the short gain, and that will be the last play of the game. So the final score is Northview 49 and uh, 12 for Rehoboth. Any closing comments, Coach? Excuse me, man. Say any, any closing comments? Well, the closing comment is that uh, Northview played really good football. Stop, uh, Rehoboth's, Rehoboth's offense was a, uh, was a, was a, didn't have a very good half, and I thought the offensive and defensive line for Northview dominated uh, Rehoboth. That's why they won. Yeah, okay. So uh, it, it was a pretty dominant game by the uh, the uh, Cougars, and they put on a very impressive performance sure offensively. Both quarterbacks were able to do some really amazing things. Um, uh Harris came in and he, he put together a couple of touchdowns and uh, it gave him a little different look. You know, Jaden's a little faster than Peters and Peters ran the ball good. Did a good job running the offense. Both of them threw the ball well. Uh, both of them had a fumble, but both of them I thought played really well. But again, and uh, I thought uh, the wide receivers played better for Northview than they've been playing. I thought uh, I was impressed with that. I thought they, uh, they did a good job of coming off the ball and blocking. And that post pattern that easily caught toward in the ball game was pretty. So uh, definitely Northview's a better football team than they were last year. And, uh, and I'm proud of that and proud they made it. They made some headway. No okay, that's, that's going to wrap, wrap it up for us tonight. Um, the final score is Northview 49, Rehoboth 12. This is Mick Kirkland on behalf of uh, Coach Harry Wayne Parrish and a cameraman tonight, Willie Elder, saying good night from Rehoboth High School. You've been watching High School Football Game Night, presented by Scenic Cable Network and Productions. Join us again next time.